Hi there! Welcome to the third part of the design and construction of a curve tracer. Last time we have worked on the power supply for the device. In this video instead we will work on the waveform generator, the block capable of generating the periodic ramp to power the component under test, as well as generating a ladder voltage output in sync with the ramp and having 4 or 8 constant steps used to optionally control the component under test. Let's jump right away into this interesting topic. One way to make a waveform generator is to use analog components all the way, or mix analog components for the ramp with digital ones for the ladder. However, in my design, I opted for an all-digital solution for generating the waveforms, and a couple of pumps just for buffering the digitally generated output, so the impedance can be lowered for the next block in the functional diagram. In the picture you can see that I have used an Arduino Nano for generating both the ramp and the ladder waveforms. Actually, the Arduino generates the signal in a numeric format, and these numbers are fed to a couple of R2R digital to analog converters, one for each waveform. Since the ramp signal has to be relatively precise, with no visible steps on the oscilloscope screen, I decided to use 8-bit numbers so that I can approximate each ramp with a ladder made of 256 very small steps. The actual ladder, instead, is supposed to generate either 4 or 8 steps, depending on the position of switch S1. To obtain that, I was able to use only 3 bits. Now, the 8 bits for the ramp are generated at the outputs from D0 to D7 of the Arduino Nano, and are converted to a analog signal by the digital to analog converter made with the resistors from R1 to R16. The output of such DAC goes then through the hot pump at the bottom right of the picture, and it can be extracted at the pin header J2. The three bits for the ladder are generated at the outputs D8, D9 and D10, and then they go through the DAC made with the resistors R17 through R22. The resulting analog signal is then buffered by the upper right hot pump in the picture. The Arduino will need to be programmed so that for each step of the ladder a full ramp is generated. Let's take a look at the software now. Before entering the merit of the code to generate the two signals, I would like you to take a look at this library file I created using the suggestions of Khaled Magdi in his website. The URL is mentioned in the comment at the beginning of the file itself as well as in the video summary. Basically, the code that we need to write needs to be fast enough to produce repetitive signals fast enough to fool our eyes when looking at the oscilloscope screen. While the curves at the oscilloscope will be generated one at a time, if they are visualized fast enough, we will not see them one by one, but we will see them as if they were on the screen all at the same time. To achieve that, we cannot use the usual functions provided by the Arduino IDE to read and write pins one at a time. They would be too slow and would prevent us from achieving our objective. Instead, we need to work directly with the registers inside the Atimega 328, which is the microcontroller used to build the Arduino Nano. There are three main groups in the Atimega, named B, C and D. Each group deals simultaneously with a number of bits. To show how that works, I added this table to the initial comment, which for each group provides the list of all the bits and the corresponding pins of the Arduino where these bits are made available. We find that group D controls 8 bits, corresponding to the Arduino pins from D0 to D7. This is in fact the group we will use to generate the ramp. Register B, instead, controls the bits corresponding to pins from D8 to D13. We will use this group to generate the ladder signal. And finally we have group C that controls the Arduino pins from A0 to A5. To work on these groups we use a set of 9 registers. 
Three are used to define the usage for the bits for each group or mode. Three are used to actually read write the bit contents all at once in a single shot. And finally, three registers used to read and write the pins state regardless of their mode. The registers to define the mode are called DDRB, DDRC, and DDRD. The registers to read and write the pin contents as a single block are called port B, port C, and port D. And finally, the registers to read and write the state of each pin are called pin B, pin C, and pin D. Following the main comment at the beginning, we find the definition of a number of macros that are used to do the actual work. Along with the definition, there is also an example on how to use each macro. For example, to write the hexadecimal number 0x0f on port B, we use macro port write, passing the name of the group, in this case B, and the hexadecimal value 0x0f. I will make available to you the whole library file in the archive on lnesy.com, as well as the whole Arduino code to generate the waveforms. Please find the link in the video description. Now that we have learned how to deal with groups of pins at once, let's take a look at the actual waveform generation code. The first thing to notice in the file is the inclusion of the library we have just described. The library file is actually supposed to be located in the same directory where all the other Arduino libraries are located, and it has to go into a folder named after the library itself, like I'm showing you right now. As an alternative, you can put the port manipulation.h file in the same directory as the sketch we are now describing. However, if you put the library along with the other libraries, it will be there already to be used in any other Arduino code you may write in the future. After the library inclusion, we find the definition of a few global variables that will be used later in the code. These variables need to be global because they have to retain their value in between different calls of the same functions that use them. After that, we see the setup function. This function performs all the operations that need to be executed only once, at the very beginning, once the Arduino is turned on. We see here that we define all the pins of group D as output pins, and these are in fact the pins used to generate the numbers describing the ramp signal. We also define the three least significant digits of group B as output pins. These are those that will generate the ladder steps. And finally, we initialize some of the global variables to an initial value. Let's go now to the loop function. This is the one that will be executed continuously by the Arduino. Every time the function exits, it immediately starts again from the beginning. First thing, local variable A1 is defined. This variable will tell us how many steps have to be created for the ladder. We read this information from pin A1, which is pin 1 in the group C. Once the number is extracted, we use its value to determine the value of two global variables that will later be used to actually generate the ladder. We will create our ladder in eight different passes. One pass for each step when we want to create a eight steps ladder. Two passes for each step when we want to generate a four steps ladder. The variable delta step is set to the number of passes needed for each step. The variable max step instead is set to the number of steps we have decided to generate. The ramp, on the other hand, will require 256 passes to be generated. However, such passes for the ramp need to be contained in one single step of the ladder. Once all the numbers are initialized, we proceed with the code from line 55 to line 78 to actually generate the pieces of the ramp and the ladder. Step number and ramp level variables are the ones that will count the number of times a function loop is called and, depending on their values, we will know when to generate the numbers for the ladder steps and for the ramp. 
The numbers are brought to the output on lines 65 and 66, writing the current signal level for each waveform on the appropriate register. Let's now take a look at the prototype to see this code at work. The prototype is built on one of my homemade breadboard holders, which I have extensively used in my latest works. If you are interested in making one of these on your own with your 3D printer, just drop me a note in the comments and I will send you both the OpenSCAD file and the STL version of the device so you can slice and print it by yourself. The transformer is on the left side here, it is seated on a base that allows to keep all the high voltage connections on the inside so that we can safely work when the transformer is plugged into a socket. The power supply unit, which we examined in the previous episode, is seated here on an adapter for the breadboard holder. This power supply unit provides the 5 volts for the Arduino, located here on the far end breadboard, and the plus and minus 15 volts for the op-amps. The outputs of the Arduino Nano go to the 8 bits DAC and the 3 bits DAC on the other breadboard. The 8 bits DAC is the one generating the ramp, while the 3 bits DAC generates the ladder shaped signal. We can select the number of steps for the ladder using this switch on the front panel. The upper position is for the 8 steps ladder, the lower position is for the 4 steps ladder. I have on the panel a couple of more switches and a potentiometer, as you can see. However, they are not yet connected as they will be part of the remaining of the curve tracer circuitry. Let's now see how all of this works. And for that I have connected the ramp output to one of the oscilloscope probes, the one for which the signal will be visualized with a yellow trace. The ladder output is instead connected to the other probe, for which the signal will be represented with a blue trace. The steps switch is currently set to 8 steps. Let's now take a look at the oscilloscope monitor. And we can clearly see the ramp and the 8 steps ladder. Note how the ramp starts exactly at the beginning of each step of the ladder. Let me now set the number of steps to 4. And this is the result. We now have a 4 steps ladder starting and ending perfectly in sync with the beginning and end of each ramp. Let me now switch again, so you will be able to see the difference between the two ladders. And you can see also how the transition is very smooth to the eye. This way we can decide to have a finer resolution of the curves of the component under test, or a rougher resolution depending on what we are looking for. You may have noticed that the two signals I produced with the Arduino and buffered by the op-amps are both up to 5 volt wide and have a positive only voltage. The next step is to build another element of the curve tracer that will modify these signals to increase their amplitude at will and will also able to invert the polarity, creating therefore negative voltages to test the components that require them. This element is the level adjustment block in this diagram and we will talk about it in the next episode of the series. If you don't want to lose the next episode, please make sure you have subscribed to the channel and enabled the notifications, and while we'll wait for it, I'll leave you with my usual happy experiments. <laughs>